dead or alive, literally or figuratively, physically or spiritually, on a scale of one being utterly dead and totally alive being 10. How dead or alive are you? Let's try and get down to the truth. Even though you might look all right, sound all right, breathe all right, seem all right, maybe everything is not completely all right. There might be some darkness to your light, some loss to your fight, some blindness to your sight, some death to your life. You're probably not fully dead, I hope, but just might be hitting the dead end of feeling numb and dead end. This could be dead wrong, but maybe it's dead on. So you're not a one or a 10, not totally dead or alive, but on the scale, probably somewhere less than a five, more dead than alive. Or maybe you're beginning to find that you're more like a seven, eight, or nine, living but a little less than totally alive. What keeps you less than alive? Well, remove one letter from the word, sound it out, and you get a lie. Often it's the truth about ourselves that we try to deny, but when we lie to ourselves, we lie loudest. So let me get this off my chest. I confess and promise that it's best to be honest. It's the only way to begin to overcome that restlessness. This is leaving me breathless. But I think we can all agree that our primary responsibility is to define reality so that we no longer, so that we can experience the possibility of no longer being death detainee, but really living life abundantly in all actuality. And our only hope for this is what happened on that famous Friday on the hill called Calvary. But first, Let's talk about me, myself, and I. I'm not as awesome as I think, nor am I holding everything in sync. You can kiss that idea, bye, bye, bye. I am not in control, nor am I the captain of my soul, but left on my own and one who's physically living, but spiritually dead. This is where my choices have ultimately led. But dead or alive aren't always an either or, but sometimes mysteriously, miraculously, like on Calvary, can be a cause and effect. Let me be direct. Death and life inseparably intersect. Death is the vehicle to life. The seed must die in order to multiply. We must winter before we can spring. And the truest life is made available and most fully seen in the very reflection of Jesus' death and resurrection. Are you making the connection? He didn't just physically live, but was fully alive. On the cross, he didn't figuratively die, but he was literally dead. And he went down to the grave in order to rise and to save and to bring life out of death so that all people may profess that Jesus, he is alive. So let me, so let me ask you one more time. Are you alive or dead, a one or a 10? If you're feeling dead, know that you don't have to stay that way. Jesus, he sure didn't. And because he lives, so can you. So to him, it's your life that you must give. So die to live and live to die. And in Christ, you will find yourself no longer dead, but fully alive. Amen? Let's stand and sing to our risen living Savior, Jesus, all together.